We're going to go ahead and take a look at number 51 from 9.4, simplifying and combining radical expressions. So number 51 reads the cubed root of 7a cubed all over 64. And one of the first things that you guys want to note is can you reduce 7 over 64? Recall from class today, we said that we can reduce those two numbers because both of them are inside numbers or they're both inside the radical or they're both in prison. Okay, in this case, if you were to check with your calculators, if you need to, 64 divided by 7 doesn't divide evenly. You're going to get a decimal, so it's not going to come out pretty, so we're going to leave it alone. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to move on to another trick that we have up our sleeves, and we can give that cube root to the value that's in the numerator along with giving the cube root to the value that's sitting in the denominator. Okay, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm breaking the problem into two. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at what I have in the numerator first. We want to see who we can break out of the prison. So in this case, if we go ahead and take a look at this, seven, I can't break seven down so that I get three of the same value. Because if you think about it, 7, the only two values that multiply to give you 7 is 1 times 7. And this is an example of a prime number, okay? Um, recall that a prime number is a value that is um, whose factors are itself and 1, and that's it. So when we go ahead and evaluate this, unfortunately, 7 has to stay underneath the root. 7 stays in prison. But now we can go ahead and focus on that a cubed. There are three a's underneath the prison, uh, or the radical, and I need three of the same value in order to break that group out. Well, how many a's do I have in an a cubed? Three. So I can take that group out. Okay. Now we need to get a little bit more creative. Um, we're going to move down to the denominator. So we have the cube root of 64. So let's break this down. 64 would become 8 times 8. Well, I can break those down further. Um, if you can break down a number, please recall that the correct term is it's a composite number. It's made up of a couple other numbers or it's made up of, you know, a few prime numbers. So if we break down 8, we get 2 times 4 in both cases. And I'm going to run an x through the 8s because I'm done with them. They exist now as the 2 times the 4. And I'm also going to go ahead and circle these 2s because the 2s are prime numbers. But the 4s I can continue to work with. So 4 becomes 2 times 2 in both cases. And again, I'm going to run an x through these so, I don't, uh, so I'm not tempted to go back to them and I'm gonna circle my primes. And I'm sorry, that third two right there kind of looks a little bit misleading, so bear in mind that that is a two. Okay, so now recall that we need groups of three in order to break the value out. Well, I have one group of three here, so I'm going to put a two there to represent that group. And then I have another group of three here, and that group will be represented here. So in this case, the value of 64 in the denominator, everything breaks out. So I don't need that radical anymore. It's gone. There's no point in having a prison if there's no one to put it to put in there. So we'll go ahead and we'll clean up our final solution. So this is a times the cubed root of 7 all over. And recall, values that you pull out, you multiply together. So this becomes 4. So here's your solution. We're all good. And that's it. Go ahead and try some other problems in the general vicinity in your textbook and see if you have this skill down.